Dear colleagues, I'm Alexander Ribó, a geologist working in National Institute of Health of El Salvador, and I'm going to present you the following presentation. Geonefrosalva, a GIS platform to identify possible environmental risk factors of chronic kidney disease of non-traditional causes in El Salvador. This is an effort carried out by a multidisciplinary team formed by health, environment and chemistry researchers of different institutions like the National Institute of Health, the Ministry of Health of El Salvador and the Ohio University from USA. First, I will give you a short introduction about chronic kidney disease in Central America. Then, I will tell you which is the purpose of this work and I will speak about the several steps forward to generate the Frolempa GIS platform. Also, I will show you some preliminary results. And finally, I will present the following steps that will be developed to improve this platform and I will tell you the final conclusions of the present study. Kidney disease or CKD is caused by structural or functional kidney abnormalities present for more than three months with health implications. In last stages, CKD is irreversible and is identified as chronic kidney failure. Traditionally, CKD is related to diabetes or hypertension and it affects to older populations. In El Salvador and other Central American countries, CKD is a growing problem of disastrous consequences. As you can see, in the graphic, El Salvador has the larger mortality by chronic kidney failure and it is growing up alarmingly as compared with other American countries. Together with the common CKD, there is a CKD not related to traditional causes and it affects especially to all age farmers. It is known as CKD of non-traditional causes or unknown etiology, CKD ANT. This specific CKD has high prevalence in El Salvador as compared to the northern countries. As you can see in the maps, in El Salvador distribution of chronic kidney disease and chronic kidney failure without diabetes were related mainly to the distribution of sugarcane cultivation and then to the temperature and cotton cultivation areas. In Sri Lanka, a similar CKD of unknown causes affects the rural population. Local researchers present a model where arsenic, heavy metals and pesticides are identified as causes of the disease and also identify some relationships with environmental specific characteristics. The flowchart in the picture shows the relationship with different variables considered by the Sri Lanka researchers. These recent investigations show the importance of the environmental risk factors in CKD of non-traditional causes. Thus, for evaluate these risk factors is essential a compilation of great amounts of environmental data considering its geographical location. That means that it's essential to work with geographic information systems in order to manage all this data efficiently. The scope of this work is to design a geographical information system platform or GIS platform to efficient management of a multidisciplinary data required to identify and characterize environmental and occupational risk factors of CKD of non-traditional causes. Also, for prevention of the disease and to improve the monitoring of patients and their relationship with nephrotoxic substances. To carry out this objective, the GIS platform has to provide tools to facilitate the harmonization of an heterogeneous data set tools to represent the spatial data through interactive maps and tools for data analysis. Then, this platform has to be open for adapting data and finally, it has to be compatible 
with common software. The first step to build a GIS platform is to develop databases of georeferenced information. For the study of environmental risk factors of CKD, three different sets of data were compiled. These are environmental data related to concentrations of toxic substances in the different environmental phases, surveys carried out to the population of the studied areas, and data formed mainly by several layers of cartographic information. All these data have the geographic coordinates as common link. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the different sets of data. First, we compiled environmental data from different institutions and scientific and technical literature. These are data about water quality, fluvial and marine sediment quality, soil and bedrock composition, and about the presence of toxins in food and crops. These data were originally in books, institutional reports, scientific papers, or web documents. Then, the National Institute of Health acquired new data through environmental sampling. Soil samples, water samples from the rivers, from water, and from the drinkwater network, and also sugar cane samples and corn samples and food samples were obtained. These samples were from several farming communities with high prevalence of CKD of non-traditional causes and from a reference area located in the National Park of Primary Forest. All these samples were analyzed by the National Reference Laboratory of Ministry of Health and some in situ analysis were carried out by the samplers team. The National Institute of Health also carried out several surveys about occupational and non-occupational exposition to toxic agrochemicals in communities heavily affected by chronic kidney disease of non-traditional causes. Some of these data were collected directly in digital format using MoviForms. MoviForms is a tool developed by the National Institute of Health team to facilitate the collection of data. MoviForms is a software with a free interface where you can fill in the survey forms using a mobile device as a tablet or a smartphone. Finally, generic geographical data were compiled. These data were stemmed from different institutions. This set of data is formed by cartography layers, as for example, there are layers about administrative boundaries, about physical geography, or, for example, regional geology. All gathered data were stored and organized in a standard format. New acquired data were georeferenced by GPS. All data were digitalized using Excel spreadsheets. Data from external sources were georeferenced through Google Earth or reprojected in a standard coordinate system if it was necessary. The quality of all compiled data from external sources was evaluated and this evaluation was added in the databases through a numerical code. And finally, the references of the sources of information were reported. A relational model of database was selected to store the data because this model provides tools to ensure avoid duplication of records. It also ensures referential integrity. That means if you want to delete a record, all the related dependent records are deleted. This type of database facilitates the normal normalization because this model is easy to understand. The software select was PostgreSQL with PostGIS. PostgreSQL is an open source database system that is compatible with the common use operating system. It also includes the standard data types of the majority of databases and it can store binary large objects like pictures or videos. PostGIS is, it is also a free software and it adds a support for geographic objects allowing location queries 
to be run in SQL. This is a screenshot of PostgreSQL database through a PJ admin interface. PJ admin interface is a software that allows us to administrate PostgreSQL databases. This screenshot shows Quantum GIS, a GIS open source software compatible with PostgreSQL database. The picture shows a map formed by different cartographic layers. Quantum GIS also can be considered as an interface to administrate the PostgreSQL databases. As is shown in this flowchart, all gathered data were stored in three different PostgreSQL databases. A database storing survey data, a database storing cartographic data, and a database storing environmental data. Quantum GIS, PJ Admin, and MobiForms are the interfaces used to introduce the data inputs. Interactive maps can be generated through Quantum GIS or using other common GIS softwares. Through GIS softwares, also query tables can be extracted from the databases. The database architecture is open to input new data and to updates as might be needed for further investigations. This map of arsenic content in surface waters of El Salvador rivers and lakes were generated using data from cartographic database and from the environmental database. The Batman bounds layer, lakes layer and basin layers were obtained from the cartographic database and on the other hand arsenic concentrations were obtained from the environmental database. Arsenic concentration sources were the Ministry of Environmental and Natural Resources databases, NGOs reports and scientific papers. All these databases are online available. In the map Arsenic concentrations are classified according to the arsenic concentrations limit established by the Salvadorian legislation for drinking water quality. According to these results, the concentrations higher than the Salvadorian standard are located in the basins of River Lampa, Pash River, Rio Grande, Giboa River, and Comalapa River. These results show that the arsenic pollution in Salvadoran waters is a whispered problem. This map of Ciudad Romero community, a community heavily affected by chronic kidney disease of nutritional causes, as I told before, shows the distribution of water harness in groundwater. This map was built using a digital elevation model layer and a contouring layer of distribution of water harness. Water harness contouring layer was obtained through the interpolation of the results of analyzing water samples obtained in domestic wells. In this map, also the street layer was added in order to facilitate the data location. This example shows that groundwater in Ciudad Romero in general, could be considered hard. Harness of water is a risk factor of CKD of non-traditional causes, together with arsenic concentrations, according to the recent Sri Lanka investigations. This water was consumed until 2005 by the local population. However, nowadays, it is only used to cattle, to domestic cleaning, and some things for cooking. Former studies found high levels of arsenic in groundwater of this community. As a next step, a new database with clinical and epidemiologic data will be added to this platform. The incorporation of this new database will be useful to evaluate the relationship of clinical and epidemiological data with environmental data and survey data to generate explanatory models of 
chronic kidney disease of non-traditional causes. I can conclude that Nephrolempa platform offers a number of important advantages and it contributes in the following aspects. Data stemming from many different sources, as for example public institutions and scientific literature and new acquired data, have been classified, harmonized and incorporated in several databases in an homogeneous, ready-to-use format. The databases contain all information in the available sources, allowing for its use in future studies dealing with issues other than the CKD of non-traditional causes studies. The database's architecture is open to input new data and updates as might be needed for future investigations. The mapping capability of the platform together with the statistical analysis will be a powerful tool for the CKD of non-traditional causes characterization and also to develop mitigation initiatives to toxic environmental threats to help as for example living lab projects. Thank you very much for your attention.